Hello everyone. This is Dr. Iram and our topic for today is Shigella. Shigella is a short, rod-shaped bacilli. It is gram-negative and appears pink in color. It is a facultative anaerobe, which is easy to remember by the tape on its nose. Its hands and legs have been tied up, indicating it is non-motile. Shigella is non-capsulated and non-sporing. Shigella has four subspecies, S. dysentre, symbolized by a poop emoji, S. flexneri, symbolized by a flexed muscle, S. boydi, symbolized with a boy, and a D. S. sonei, symbolized by the sun with an I. Of these, S. sonei is able to withstand the most difficult conditions and is common all over the world. However, it is S. flexneri that is the most common in India. Shigella only infects humans and primates. It is primarily a parasite of the intestine. It is transmitted by the phaco oral route from the feces of an infected person through unclean hands food, water, and flies. It takes only 10 to 100 bacilli to cause the disease, meaning it has a very low infective dose. Shigella primarily infects children and the elderly, along with those having compromised immunity. Infection by Shigella causes bloody diarrhea with mucus, abdominal cramps, fever, accompanied by nausea and vomiting. Shigella usually invades the mucosa of the large intestine, gaining entry through M cells. This is mediated by a large virulence plasmid, which means that Shigella possesses many proteins that aid in its entry. It spreads through macrophages, which undergo apoptosis to spill out the bacteria. They enter the cells through junctional complexes where they multiply. Remember, Shigella is non-motile, so it requires the assistance of actin to spread from cell to cell. It slides along actin stress cables where it causes polymerization of the host cells. Another possible path of entry is through PMN transmigration. This might get a bit confusing, so I have highlighted the three important points to remember. Number one is a large virulence plasmid. Number two is entry through M cells. And number three is spread through actin polymerization. Shigella produces two types of exotoxins. Enterotoxin called Shigella enterotoxin type 1 and type 2 found predominantly in S. flexneri. It also produces a cytotoxin called Shiga toxin produced by S. dysentery. Shigella also possesses an endotoxin which is released by autolysis. This primarily causes intestinal inflammation and ulceration. Infection by Shigella could cause some complications. Megacolon, which means an increase in the size of the large intestine, perforation and ulceration of the intestinal walls, and protrusion of the intestine from the anus, which is called rectal prolapse. Metabolic complications of Shigella are lowering of body levels of glucose, sodium, and water, called hypoglycemia hyponatremia and dehydration respectively. A lethal complication of Shigella is Akiri syndrome. It is a form of toxic encephalopathy and is presented by dysentery, hyperpyrexia, seizures, headaches and a loss of consciousness. For the laboratory diagnosis of Shigella, we use media common with salmonella. The specimen is collected from a stool sample and transported in Sachs medium. It is cultured using selective media that is DCA, XLD and SS agar. 
it is enriched using gram negative broth tetrathionate broth and selenite f broth a few important biochemical properties of shigella are it is non lactose fermenting with the exception of s sonei it is mannitol fermenting and catalase positive the exception for both being s dysentery the treatment of shigella is done by using oral rehydrating solutions and antibiotics the drug of choice is a 3 day course of ciprofloxacin this may vary as per the strain severity of infection and the immune status of the patient i hope this video helps you recollect everything about shigella it would be great if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel so dear friends stay safe and remember to wash your hands before you eat